Hey everybody, we're going to be looking at MIDI clock today. Specifically, we're going to be connecting the Logic clock out to the input on the Sakai uh, MPK Mini. This is a keyboard which I use particularly when traveling or when teaching a class and I don't have a big keyboard in the classroom. I do use this quite a bit, but it's not like my main at-home keyboard. Anyway, uh, this has some pretty cool stuff on it, including the nice MPK pads, which um, actually have pressure sensitivity if you're using the note repeat on here. It's really awesome. But the problem is, since that's an on keyboard function and Logic can have its own separate tempo, how do we get those two to communicate just right? Well, one of the ways that you could theoretically do it is to just set the tempo out here um, to be the same as the one in Logic. That's still not going to get you all the way there because uh, you'll play a note and it'll be a tempo, but they could be off from each other. The other thing we have with this, and this is the uh, the editor software that you can download from Akai, it has the external clock option. Internal means we're going to go off this tempo. External means that we're going to look for MIDI clock. So once we choose that, we say send a RAM, and that's when it sends this over the MIDI USB cable to the keyboard and updates the settings on there. It's not a real time back and forth. And now we need to come into Logic. It's not the main preferences. It is in the project settings under synchronization and under MIDI. Now, MIDI clock right here. We have two destinations possible. I've got the first one turned on and sent to the MPK Mini 2. And that is the, uh, the actual MIDI port. That's what it's called. Uh, we have some other options here in terms of the song because you can do some song controlling. Uh, start position, we can have a delay, and then we can also auto compensate for plug-in latency, which I have turned on. Once you do this, then anytime your transport is engaged, it'll send out that information. So I have the click track turned on, I set it to 120. I'm going to use the note repeat. Let's just set it here so you can see a little bit maybe. Let's push play. Yes, it's staying pretty reliably in time. Change this down to 88. And it's automatically changing as well. Well, not automatically. It's receiving the, the clock tempo information and it's matching it. Now, what this means is, is that uh, anytime I'm doing something, even though the note repeat function is built into the keyboard itself, it's going to match the tempo and logic. That means I can add drum parts and use what I like in here. You have a note repeat function in logic. However, these pads don't do the velocity sensitive adjustment of volume. That only works when you have this thing pushed down. So you couldn't actually use that in this case. It doesn't give you that continuous uh, velocity changing. So it's a downside. I've tried just about everything I can think of to do that. Uh, now, the other thing. Let's, um, let's look at the arpeggiator. Let me pull this back down. Uh, let's look at the arpeggiator, which is built onto here. Now, this is not something I would typically use uh, just because I don't think it gives me much more value than, say, the arpeggiator MIDI plugin inside Logic. But we have it. You'll notice nothing happens when I push keys now. Let me turn off the arpeggiator. Hold them down, nothing happens. That's because it is actively waiting for that MIDI clock now. So in order to use that, I have to push play. Okay, so that's now working. 
Let's go back, and just so we finish this all off, we're going to use the note repeat again with the drums. I'm going to record this time, and you'll see what gets recorded. And let's change this tempo up to like 150, so it's a lot faster. So that's that one. Let's uh, Okay, so now check this out. All of the notes are recorded. So the note repeat is happening before it goes to the actual track in the sequencer. And now we have all of those notes. You can see all the differences in velocities. And it's quite usable. If we do the note repeat up in here, uh, it as well will do that, but for instance, the arpeggiator, if we do an arpeggiator here, turn it on. It is now added with all the arpeggiated notes, which means we can't go back and change it like we could with the MIDI plugin. So for me, I'm using the note repeat on the keyboard because I like it and it has the pads are just great, but the arpeggiator I'm using inside Logic. Anyway, this is a look at MIDI Clock and just one way to interact with this particular device, but it's the same with any of them that accept that. Cool. Hope you enjoyed this, this little look at this, and I will see you all later.